Hello! So today we have a bit of a different viewing angle for you. This is a setup that I came up with when I was doing some live streaming. So I am now doing live streaming. And these streams are sort of the preliminary work that goes into the videos. So when I am making something in these videos, I've often gone through a process of experimenting with things and trying out some prototypes before I film what I'm going to make. And I've decided to open up that process to some live streams. So you can join us there and contribute some. And even the code that we are going to be using today comes from a friend, Cats and Dogs, who is on the Discord channel and was participating in those live streams. So he suggested some code and I have adapted it. And today we are going to go into a more or less final version of it. Nothing is ever really final here, so final should absolutely be in quotes. Anyway, what we are doing is creating a client to go along with the server that we have in HDE libc already. I can show you what this is going to do in the future, and this is what we were working on in the live stream. So here I have the terminal for my MacBook, and this is the computer I am currently working on. And over here, I have an SSH connection to a Raspberry Pi. And if I run the program that we wrote, you can see that I start a server and a client all in one. So they are in two separate threads. And if I start that on both ends, and then I write something from one, the other receives it. Now, if I write something else, the program crashes. So we have more work to do on making this an actual peer-to-peer -peer network, but this is sort of the prototyping that we are doing over on the live streams. So I hope you'll join us there. Anyway, what we are doing today is creating the client to match our server. So I want to reduce the number of things we have to do anytime we want to make a request. So let's take a look first at the code that cats and dogs submitted. And this is separated into two separate files, the server and the client. So let's just look at the client. And we can see that we are doing a lot of things that are very similar to what the server had to do. So we create a socket. We then use this socket address to identify the server that we are going to connect to. Then we have a connect function that is going to actually establish that connection between the client and the server. And then we are going to, where is it? Well, in cats and dogs version, we don't call this, but in my interpretation, we do. We are going to actually send a message to the server. So those are the steps that we are going to do. So let's hop over to HDE libc and create an object that can make this a little bit easier to do. So we're going to call this client. And I actually want to start in the .c file for once. So I want to actually define the function that is going to be making the request first. And then I'm going to sort of build the object around it to make it a little easier. So we are going to define a void function called request. Now, I'm probably going to have to change that name in the future since there are probably other things that are going to go into the library that will want a request function. So I may need to make that name more specific in the future, but for now I like that it's one simple word. Anyway, this request is probably going to take a struct of a client, but for now we are not going to specify that. We are just going to specify that it takes a character pointer to the server address and this will be an IP address. It will also take a character pointer to the request. And that's what you're going to actually send the server. So if we look at my editing of cats and dogs' code, we can see that first I create a socket. And that's probably something we are going to want in the client object itself. But after we have created that, we now need to specify which server we are going to be connecting to and which port we are going to use to connect to it. So I'm going to copy this code and paste it here. And let's rewrite it to make it a little bit more suited to what we are doing here. And I can kind of step through what's happening. So first we need this struct sock addr in. And we're going to call this server address. 
And that means we're going to need to change this variable here. So let's say server IP address. Okay, so we create that struct and then we need to set the sign family and sign port. So we are probably going to extract that information out of a client struct. So let's go ahead and create a base client struct just so we can actually have something to reference client. And we can also pass into this struct client client. And we're going to want to do that as a pointer so we can do it by reference instead of by value. It saves on some processing time. So we don't have to copy over all of those individual values. We can simply point to the ones that we want. Anyway, so when we go for the, this is called the domain of the server. And can we assume that the domain of the server is the same domain as the client? We are going to say, yes, we can. So client domain. So we're going to want access to that. And then the server, well, we need to say server address. And we need to set its domain or family and its port. And we can assume that the port is also going to be set in the client as well. So we will say client port. So we're just going to assume that these are all operating on the same port. So in this case, AFINet and 1248 is the port that we have chosen for our peer-to-peer -peer network. And this may not be the perfect client object. So if you're making one for HTTP requests, it may be that some of these things we want to change around how they are structured in here. So maybe we specify the port with the, the request function or we allow for the, the server to be on a different domain than the client. Whatever we're going to do there, I am not sure. We'll see how that develops in the future, but for now we are going to assume all of them are on the same. So we set up this server and we also need to set up the family. What is that called again? So this is going to be client. That was not protocol, but interface. So we set the SADDR to whatever the client's interface is. So again, we are assuming that those are going to be the same. And I'm probably missing a few libraries here. So let's go ahead and include those. So I know I'm going to need sys slash socket dot h and net inet in dot h. And let's go ahead and build so we can see if there are any errors. Yes. Okay, so that's fine. And we need to just define those. Okay, so we have set what the server's address is going to be. So now we need to actually set the IP address from the string that the client is going to pass in with this function. So we're going to call this, which requires arpa slash inet.h. And that is going to let us set the actual IP address we want to use. And here we can say server IP. And instead of directly specifying AFINet, we can use client domain since we have that saved in the client. So this is going to set the string IP address of what we are actually connecting to. And instead of server, we want server address. Okay, so now that we have said that, we can actually connect to this server and write a message to it. So we are going to connect to the server and we are going to pass that the client's socket address and the client, no, not the client, the server address. We're going to cast the pointer or the memory address of server address 
to a Strocked Sock ADDR pointer, and we want the size of server address. So the connect function takes a socket, and a socket is an integer that represents the address of this socket on your network. So when we connect, we specify that we want that address, and then we are specifying the server address. So this is who we are connecting to. And we need to cast this variable, which comes from these parameters here, as a pointer to SOC ADDR. And then we simply need to pass in the number of bytes associated with it. And we're still getting a bunch of errors because we haven't defined our client yet, but so far we are doing fine. So once we connect, we can then actually write our message or send our message. So we are going to send the message to the client's socket. And the message we are going to send is going to be request. And then we need the number of bytes that are in that request. So we are going to use string length of request. And this is going to require the string.h library. And then the last parameter, I actually don't know what that is. So if you know why there's a zero as the last parameter here, I'd love to hear it. Please let me know in the comments. Anyway, this is all we need to do to actually send a message. So whenever we send a message, we are going to assume that the server is using the same domain, port, interface, all of those things as the client. And then we are going to specify the IP address of that server. And we are going to make our connection after that is specified. So we make our connection here. And then we send the message to that server. So let's go ahead and create these fields before it gets any angrier at us. So let's open up the .c here, and let's see which parts we need. So we need a domain, and that's an integer. We also need a port. We will need an interface, and this needs to be an unsigned long. And we are going to eventually need a few more things, but for now, I believe that's all that we have seen. So let's save this and build, see if all those go away, okay. Server address. And we need the socket, okay. Build once more, great, okay. Now, this request is going to be made within a client. So we want this function to actually be a member function or a member method to our client object. So let's create a function pointer inside the client object. So this is going to be void, a pointer called request, and it takes as an argument struct client pointer client character pointer server IP and character pointer request. And now we can begin to work on our constructor. So this is going to return a struct client, and we'll call it client constructor. So here we can specify the domain, the port, and the interface that the client is going to use, and by extension, the the domain port and interface we assume our server is going to use as well. So we will have them pass in domain int port and u long interface. So our client will, we need to create an instance of a client first, struct client client, and then client dot domain equals domain client dot port oops, equals port, and client.interface equals interface. We can then specify that client.request is going to equal our request function. But we need to have this actually defined before we set it. So here you can see that we are trying to set client's request equal to request, but request hasn't been defined at that point. So that's why we would use a function prototype. So void request 
a client pointer and two character pointers. So now we have our function set. So we are going to return the client. And that's how a user is going to create an instance of this object. It gives them one function to call that will return an object that has all of the parameters that they specified. But there is a parameter that we are missing because if we look at the instantiation of our client, first we need to specify this socket and we also need to specify a, a protocol and a service. So we need those as well. So let's say int service and int protocol. And then in our constructor, we are actually going to create the instance of a socket or actually connect that to our local network and give it an address. And that's the address that we are going to use when we are actually writing and connecting to the server. So our client.socket is going to equal socket. And we are going to pass this domain service, whoops, and protocol. So we need those as parameters. So we will pass in int service and int protocol. So that should give us all of the parameters we need. This is going to create an instance of a client that will group together all of the relevant data. And part of that data is a function that allows the client to make a request. And this request is going to first address the server to whom we want to make the request. It will then set the IP address that we can use to actually connect to it. Then it will actually make this connection through the socket address and to the server address. And then we will send whatever message we want to that server. So that is going to be our basic client. I'll do some work off camera to kind of clean up the code, add some comments and anything else we may need in there. But for now, that is going to do it. We are going to continue this in the future by trying to create a peer-to-peer -peer network out of these objects. And I hope you would enjoy joining me on some live streams as we do some experiments with that. Hopefully by the end of this, we will be able to create a network where we can all collaborate on our own network. And the collaboration on the network will be about the network and making that network better. So it's an interesting idea and I hope you will join us there for that. But until then, I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope it was useful. Toodaloo.